Yes Fit. I'm your host, Coach D. Glad you can join me today. We are back and we are better. We don't stop improving because we want to bring you the best content possible. Enjoy our first episode of 2022 with Stephanie Garrison from Balance Culture as we talk about life, overcoming obstacles, and motivating women. I hope you're excited just as much as I am to hear our first guest of the year, Stephanie Garrison. Steph, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'm doing amazing. Um, I want you guys to understand the people that we bring in front of you or to listen to on this podcast. They're not just here to only drop motivational tips and to uh, keep you going. They're really here to express their story so that you can understand on this journey that you're not alone. Okay. And it is my duty to bring you guys the best content out there. So I want you guys to really sit back. We don't know how long we're going to go. Okay. So lock in with us. I'm sure we have interesting stories. I might play a little game at the end that Steph does not know about. Okay. Here we go. (laughs) I'm ready. Well, here we go. Okay, guys. Steph, we are sitting in balance culture. The Balance Culture? The Balance Culture. Okay, we're in Lakeland, Florida, right here. And you happen to be a part of the amazing team here. I am, yeah. Balance Culture is a women's fitness gym? Yes. Yep, our women's fitness studio. Uh And we've been around for six and a half years. We'll celebrate our seventh year coming up this September. Okay. We offer group fitness classes from bar, Pilates, yoga, stretch, spin, strength training, hit yoga, and now even a hip hop fitness class. So we're excited for that. Hip hop. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. That goes to a part of my story we can probably dive into in a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> so what? how did you even end up here? So our original owners um, are Kirsten and Ruthie. And okay. Kirsten and I grew up together. Uh, we've gone through youth group together, through high school together. And I came to Lakeland first for college at Southeastern University. And Kirsten came a year later. And so uh, growing up, I was a dancer my whole life, tap, jazz, ballet. I competed. I toured. I was in a company. And Kirsten knew that. And so as we grew into our adulthood, I uh, stayed working at Southeastern full time. And Kirsten was always in the world of um, nutrition, fitness, as well as counseling. And she birthed the idea of balanced culture. And when that idea really became a reality, she looked at me and said, can you teach for us? Can Mm -hmm. you teach bar classes? I'll do Pilates. You do bar. Ruthie can do yoga. And I was like, yes, of course. As I was growing um, into my 30s, I was like, I'm not wanting to be on stage anymore to dance. So how can I keep my body going? And fitness became that natural realm. Um, And so we started the studio. Kirsten and Ruthie were the owners. And I did um, back-end operations, but as well getting ready to instruct the classes. And so that's where it started for us. And we've gone from those three classes to now seven years later, an operating fitness studio for women throughout Polk County. And it's been honestly the best community, the best experience. And just as much for my story as for every other woman that comes in and feels empowered by a woman involved community, you can just sense it here. Yeah. That's amazing. How, how important do you think the environment is? Because you know, most gyms are, you know, it's Mm co-ed, you know, you have your men, you have your women. Some women feel uncomfortable going to gyms like that because they're wearing certain tights Mm -hmm. and guys are looking or Mm -hmm. they just don't feel uh, like having a masculine type presence around. Exactly. And if you think of that kind of business product, I think that's why we were able to develop and build balance culture the way it is. Mm -hmm. It is a women's fitness studio. So when you walk through that door, you're empowered, you're comfortable, you're confident, you're clear, you know your passion, you know your community already, and you're not feeling... um, insecure or vulnerable in a negative way. So many times fitness and health in general is a vulnerable situation, Mm -hmm. just like our finances. I don't want to tell you that I'm $5 or $10 or $10,000 in debt. That's an an, an intimate thing in our lives. Mm -hmm. The same thing with health and wellness. Sometimes society has put so much pressure on us that we're not eating the right things. You're not doing enough. You're not 
enough weight, you're too much weight, you're not this, you are that. And we've built this complex in our mind thinking health and wellness is just as much as a struggle as it is a New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. And so when Balance Culture was created to give that safe space Mm -hmm. for, hey, maybe it's a woman who's 52 years old who just got done raising her four children and now they're adults themselves and she might have that open time in her schedule to take care of herself. When she walks through these doors and knows I have a community of women saying I can restart my fitness journey again. I can focus on one part of my health that might get better. I love being that person when they get to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, a little bit of where I am at Balance Culture, I teach a lot of the beginner classes. So beginner bar is one of my favorite classes to teach. And I often say, When you walk into beginner bar, no matter what level of fitness you're at, you're going to get a great workout. You're going to sweat and you're going to be like, why are my thighs shaking like that? Oh my gosh, I didn't know my legs could do that. But at the same time, mentally, physically, and emotionally, you've been empowered for 50 minutes saying Mm -hmm. you can, you will, you did, and you showed up for yourself. You chose 50 minutes for yourself. Even if you stood there and cried right next to me, Mm -hmm. I would hold you for that 50 minutes while we pulsed our legs. If you said, hey, this is my 5.30 p.m. story for 50 minutes, I'm going to help you write that paragraph of what is that going to mean for your 50 minutes. And I I truly believe our classes take those moments for women at different levels, you know, professionals or college-age students or working moms or single moms or moms that are staying at home with their their children. And we're giving them that space to say, you get this time for you. Wow. Wow, I'm blown away already. Okay, good. Man, <laughs> Steph, you went from talking about the words that you used to help these women to letting them express themselves through writing. Mm. And then obviously they're taking action by doing and being here. Like literally you guys are doing about every step possible to meet someone. Mm. How important is that? going forward, like motivating words while you're riding on a bike or Mm -hmm. in the middle of a session and you're, you're screaming out, you got this, Yep, you can do it. How important is that? Because some people overlook that and they say, you know, you don't have to have that enthusiasm. Right. If you're going to get it done, just get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, how important is that? Because some women may not have ever heard that in their life. Well, so balance culture has um, a theme that we go off of move, Mm -hmm. nourish, think. So Fitness is often just thought, okay, I got in my physical workout and I'm done. Mm -hmm. No, let's think of how are you moving your body? That's the fitness part. Nourishing your mind, your body, and your spirit. Thinking through your mind, your body, and your spirit. And Mm -hmm. how can we bring those three things together? And so on the spin bike, for certain instance, I am empowering my class the entire time. And I'm reminding them, you're worth every promise, promotion, purpose, and proposal that's been spoken over your life. You're deserving of it on a bike that was made to go absolutely nowhere, Mm -hmm. and yet everywhere we need it to go at the same time, we're empowering our time right there. And when you get off that bike, those affirmations don't have to stop. Mm -hmm. Put them in your pocket. Share them with that next woman who needs it. Or pull them out when you're having a really hard day and you need to remember, remember when I went 17 miles on my spin bike in 50 minutes and also had a dance party and cried and laughed? Mm -hmm. Like that was that client empowering themselves only by hearing my words because I believed it over them. Wow. You kind of went deep. Sorry. Fast. Deep, fast. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> you guys hear this? Wow. Okay. That's amazing. I want to go down that route of you talked about spiritual and what is your background? Who empowers you? Who mm. pours into you? Because you pour into so many women. Yeah. How do you get filled up? And were there times where you were insecure about working out? Yeah. How did you get through those times? So that's a very um, detailed story with lots of twists and turns, but I'll give you a quick version of it that encompasses everything. So I was a dancer my entire life. I always was putting on shows for my families at during the holidays. Hey, watch me as a three-year-old. And my parents are like, okay, she's got a lot of energy and personality. What can we put her in? Let's put her in dance. And so at three years old, they put me in dance class. And from there, I fell in love. And I danced my entire life. I went from one class a week to being there five days a week by the time I was 12, to then touring and competing and being in a ballet company and just loving the art of dance as well as building 
every part of who I am as an adult, responsibility, organization, time management, leadership, um, different roles of, you know, excellence and things like that. And I think that really encapsulated who I became as a young adult. Well, when I was a senior in high school, my dad passed away in a motorcycle accident. So literally in one day, my life went from a normal routine mm. to a statistic, mm. you know, and so many times that statistic of, okay, now I'm in a single parent home. Now I'm going to have to go through loss. Now I'm going to have to go through grief. Now I could be labeled a troubled teenager. And what was I going to do with that? Well, being raised in a Christian home, um, I knew Jesus was in my heart so much and that Holy Spirit in, the, in my gut instinct knew I wasn't a mad person. I wasn't a sad person. I wasn't going to be upset. And so I knew something had to be different. And after my dad died in my senior year, I remember waking up just a few weeks after that, learning my new routine of what life was going to be like, how I was going to grieve. And I remember rolling over and hearing the Lord just say, Steph, you can be mad at the world the rest of your life, and they're going to understand why you have hurt, why you have pain, why you have grief. Mm -hmm. Or you can wake up and say, I'm going to use this story for joy, for redemption, for healing, for other people's stories, because you're not going to be the only one who's gone through this. Mm -hmm. And I knew because I'm a happy person. I love people. I love other people's stories of happiness that I had to choose that. That was just the easiest answer. And I can fully in, like in commitment say I have practiced that and preached that my entire adulthood from that moment. And so to be here almost 20 years later from that situation and say, I get to empower women and their stories every day. I get to work at a university with 17 to 20 something year old saying, you've gone through this part of loss. Let me still share my story of where I've come from. And now to build in dance and fitness into that, that was that consistent moment. Mm -hmm. And to still say, I get to do that in a fitness studio yeah. of my story of healing, redemption, trust, freedom, all of that while being on a spin bike or while being at the ballet bar is an honor. Did you ever feel as if your story wasn't important enough? I think as humans, we always have moments of insecurity, of doubt, of loneliness, of not being noticed. Um, if I, I would... I would be incompetent or not incompetent. I would guess I would be not being truthful if I said, oh, I always thought I was confident enough to share my story or that my story was important. Mm -hmm. I think there's those moments where we're like, well, why should I share my story? Right. Am I really like the person to share? They don't need to hear my story. They don't have to carry my burden with me or would I burden them if I shared my story? Yeah. And so I think there's always those moments um, throughout our seasons of worth of clarity, of confidence. Um, but now at 36 years old and seeing what I've gone through and the moments of change in my life because of my story and other people's stories, I am confident that my story is worth being told. I am confident that my moments of healing and freedom might spark something else in someone who's gone through something similar or haven't gone through it yet, but might remember part of my story. And I have to trust like that's the God in me to give me that story. Mm -hmm. I, while as much as I write every day of my life, like the Lord has the whole book of my life. And so I trust that and I know I'm confident in it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so with your father passing at a young age, mm. Do you ever feel as if there's something that you wanted to say to him that you didn't get the chance to? Hmm. I'm sure I would probably have a different answer at 18 years old than I do at 36 years old. Mm. But now being years into this part of my life, I would say now I would say thank you. Thank you for being the best dad for 17 years. Thank you for just supporting me and being at every piece of my dance work, like every recital, every competition. To think now of like just the economy of how my parents put me through dance and how much it costs and how much children cost now. I'm like, how did like we as 
children right. get to be a part of the activities that we did. You know, right. they were working so hard. And we um, came from a lower to mid-class family, so we worked hard for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was always moments that I – You know, I knew my dad worked extra hard, but we never went without. And so there was those opportunities that he knew there was something in me that I didn't know at that age. So I would say thank you. Thank you for loving me the way you did, trusting me, providing for me, and taking on the brunt of that work so I could work hard too in my life, but know why I got to do what I got to do. Okay. So what would you say for someone who has lost their father – uh, way before you did, you know, like a mm. five, six, they didn't get the chance. Mm-hmm. What would you say? How has God, in a sense, fathered you? How did he guide you and teach you in moments where your physical father wasn't there mm-hmm. anymore? I think that's a really important question because I think there's so many children, no matter what age, that lose a parent and they can get caught in a rut if they don't get to have that strength of choosing themselves first. And I think there's um, a part, I was just having a conversation with um, some other girlfriends and they're like, when did you recognize that daughter was enough? And that's such an, I like stopped and I was like, oh, that's, that's deep. Okay. Yeah. Like, and I, and I got to share this story of losing my dad and I recognize like daughter was enough before he passed away because he only saw me as his daughter, just like our heavenly father only sees me as his daughter. Mm -hmm. Daughter was enough then, but in my moment, the significant part of my story or my, my Kodak moment would be like that moment of my my dad dying made me choose and recognize is daughter enough from God, you know, Mm -hmm. like, am I going to allow our heavenly father be the father of my life right now? And so I encourage any child young child to teenager to a grown adult who still unfortunately loses a parent, you are son or daughter enough. You know, you are in that moment where you might not physically have them to walk you down the aisle. You might not physically have them to hold your handlebars on your bike when you're first learning. You are more than enough. You're going to learn it. There's going to be a community around you that's going to be empowered to help someone like you to know your story as well and to give you a part of a push in your story. That's why I always say when you walk into the studio for fitness at 5.30 p.m., this is your 5.30 p.m. story. I'm going to help you write that paragraph, but you're choosing what words you're going to put in that paragraph for 5.30 to 6.20. Hmm. And I always say, where are you coming from? Your old to your new, your 5.30 to your 6.20. Look at the decisions that you're making for yourself in just 50 minutes. That's the same thing as a child. Look at the decisions you get to make as an eight-year-old who might lose a family member while we learn maturity in our mind, you're still making those decisions, you know? And so that grows into who you become. Man. Okay. (laughs) Wow. Okay. You just, you're really hitting on points that are biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking me down the route of when I was a child, I did things like a child, you know, it's that consumption of milk. Mm -hmm. And now you're at a different level. To where you need to eat differently, mm. you know. Speaking of kids, do you have any kids? I don't have kids. Okay. I don't have a husband. Okay. Would love the opportunity mm. for both, mm-hmm. and maybe someday that will happen. Um, but in my role at Southeastern University, I often say I get three thousand kids. They're all teenagers, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I get to be a part of them as the cool aunt, the fun sister, the mm. mom. Um, the leader, the mentor, the person who gets to eat lunch with them. And so I am fulfilled in those moments where we all have desires throughout our life. We all have goals and dreams. And while that is not a logistical, realistic um, relationship in my life right now, I look forward to that day. Right. So that's good. Mothering through um, where you're at Mm -hmm. rather than because of what I'm producing. Right. You know, it's what I'm given with. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Okay. I kind of want to go into the route of the game that I spoke okay. about. Okay. I'm yeah. excited for this. It's a quick three-question game. Okay. Okay. It's 
you're basically going to say, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some questions, and you're going to say, it was a man or a woman. Okay. 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 I'm not going to tell you the questions. I'm not going to tell you what type of question. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Just I wrap it so. fast. So I answer man you or an- woman? You answer man or woman. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, okay. Is this like pop culture? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Go ahead. Here we go. Who invented a dishwasher? A man. Okay. It was a woman. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. See, I was going to give the man a benefit of a doubt to uh-huh. help his helpmate create a more convenient and uh-huh. efficient way. But okay. Okay, right. I'm, more, I'm excited that it was a woman. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> right? But think about that. Sure. She's like, I'm tired of these Right, dishes. exactly. <laughs> right. I thought that was an obvious one, but okay, good. <laughs> okay. Next question. Who created the electric refrigerator? Um, A woman? A man? <laughs> a woman? <laughs> yes, it is a woman. Okay. I don't know her name. Okay. But I know a woman created the electric refrigerator. And we are so grateful for you guys that. are owning the kitchen, right? Okay. Now. Good. Last but not least. Okay. Who created the light bulb? Ooh, the actual light bulb and not electricity. <laughs> yes. A woman. Mm. Mm, or not. Mm. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, it was a man. It was a true question. Okay. Now, I want to move on to the next game. Okay. Okay. I want people to get to know you. Um, I want to go really fast through these questions. Okay. So they're going to be like, where were you born? What would you like eating? Perfect. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We're going fast. Five. Only five questions. Whew. There okay. we go. Where were you born? Buffalo, New York. Go Bills. Wait, wait, wait. That wait, has to wait, stay in the wait. podcast. <laughs> Bills, Mafia, all the way. And Stefan Diggs, if you're listening to this, I loved your video last what? night jumping through the table. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. You said that with so much pride. Right? Oh, for sure. Anyone from Buffalo knows the Buffalo pride. We're not even going to talk about the playoffs right now. I yeah, there's um my heart is still heavy. I had two new pieces of gear that I was planning to uh, wear uh, <laughs> and now I don't get to wear them. You ordered it early. Oh, right, exactly. For True fan. Last weekend True fan. and then the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, and yes. I had booked my ticket yes. to LA. <gasps> and after that last loss, I drove home and just took it off my Southwest account with tears. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm going to wear my one piece of um, clothing for the draft and we'll be okay. Okay. So. Okay. Here we go. We're starting over. Okay. Starting over because I threw you off. Where are you from? Buffalo, New York. Sounds good. Sunset or snow? Sunset. Pizza or chicken? Pizza, unless it's chicken wings. Carrots or bagel? Carrots every day. Balance culture or general gym? Balance culture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, let's go back to this uh, chicken pizza. <laughs> uh-huh. You like to eat chicken with pizza? Uh, no, chicken wings. Okay. So I definitely pick pizza every day. Okay. Unless the chicken was chicken wings. Mm-hmm. Being from Buffalo, Buffalo Wings, we created the actual oh, wing, right. Anchor Bar. Oh. So I am a huge wing connoisseur. <laughs> okay. Wow. I can go from franchise wings mm-hmm. to local spots and tell you what I prefer. Okay. Yeah. So now, is your nickname Stephanie Buffalo Garrison? <laughs> Today it is. <laughs> okay. Let's move forward into our last segment. Okay. I really want to um, give a spotlight to how you empower women mm. um, and how – you motivate women to push forward in whatever situation um, that they're facing. Yeah. Um, can you give an insight on your approach to your coaching style and your approach to your daily life mm-hmm. on moving forward in anything? 
Sure. I would say um, a coach is often considered a leader. And so when we think of leadership styles, I would say I have grown into being a relational leader. And I think that started in college. Um, I've been a part of Southeastern University for 19 years. And on that campus, I have been in student leadership, which means you get to be in relationship with other students while guiding them through some kind of process, through being an athlete, through living on campus, through going through financial aid. Whatever that meant, I always got to be with the student in need and walking them through how to solve their problem. And I think when that comes into fitness, my relational part of leadership or my relational part of coaching or being their instructor naturally comes out now. And that's built by my daily routines. I'm in the word every day. I'm doing my devotions every day. I'm li- the things that I'm feeding myself with audibly uh, through my ears, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, what I'm reading, who I'm with is what's filling me up to be able to pour back out. You know, we're often thought of, okay, oh man, I've just given all of myself. How am I filling back in? You know, who is in my circle that's pouring back into me when I know I need it? And when those things all balance out, I feel like I'm a strong motivator, coach, or instructor for the ladies here at The Balance Culture. Mm -hmm. And I um, have really realized in the last probably five years, my circle of people and um, influencers are about three to five, depending on the season. I have um, my friend um, who is a mom and a business owner. And those are two things that I strive to be in my future. Mm. So I'm going to meet with her consistently to learn how are you doing it well? Why do you love being a wife and a business owner and a mom? Okay, I'm going to take those nuggets from her. Mm. Then my other friend, is still single, still doing her business, and still making relationships along the way into the community. Okay, I love building relationships and community. How is she doing that? Well, that's the nugget I'm going to pull from her in my circle. Mm -hmm. Then I have um, another woman who is about 12 years older than me, married, kids are grown. So she's at that point where, okay, in my next 20 years, where do I want to be? Those are aspects of her life that I want to be fed with. And so those people in my circle that I'm being fed with is people that I see are doing it well with the love of Jesus and what I would like in my future. And then it's different authors or podcasts or things um, that fulfill me. So a resource that I love is Mark Batterson's Circle Maker Uh, and Pray the The Circle. Uh Okay, that's a 40-day devotional that I will literally, literally, I will buy for anyone who Mm -hmm. wants it. And I'm saying that publicly because that resource has changed my life. Mm -hmm. And I believe the power of prayer is real. real. I believe God is evident in the audible prayers, Mm -hmm. in the circling of prayers. Um, And so that's a resource that I do, you know? Uh, And then there's other local leaders, even here in Lakeland, that I'm like, wow, they're doing that well. Mm -hmm. Let me follow what they're doing. Even if I'm not right there next to their shoulder, I'm seeing them from afar, seeing they're loving Lakeland the way a community needs to be led Mm -hmm. and loved. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I, I feed myself that empowers me to then pour back out to our ladies here at The Balance Culture. Right. Putting yourself around the community Mm -hmm. of what you want to do and be. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We're going to wrap it up here. Great. Steph, thank you for Uh, saying yes to us, um, for recording with us. I want to um, close out by telling everyone here that Balance Culture is – a most uh, empowering woman studio. I want you guys to have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Yes Fit Live podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Any last words, Steph? Thank you so much for inviting me to your table. Uh, and it's been an honor. Okay. Take care.